Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's hearing uh, for the Committee on Cultural Affairs, Libraries, and International Intergroup Relations. We are officially in session. My name is Jimmy Van Bramer, and I'm proud to be the chair of this committee. We are joined by member of the committee, Council Member Karen Kozowitz from Queens, and two um, uh, council members who have important resolutions that we're hearing today, Council Member Carlina Rivera and Council Member Bob Holden. Uh, in the interest of time, we'll go right to the resolutions sponsored by the council members who are here with us. Uh, resolution number 285 is sponsored by Council Member Carlina Rivera, and it calls upon the United States Secretary of the Interior to recognize the historical significance of Roberto Clemente's birth, uh, place of death in Loisa, Puerto Rico, by adding it to the National Register of Historic Places. Uh, I am incredibly fond of the island of Puerto Rico. Uh, I um, obviously very much appreciate the story and the lessons of Roberto Clemente and what he has meant uh, to so many. And we are proud uh, to hear this resolution today. And I would ask Council Member Rivera to uh, speak to her very important resolution. Thank you so much, Chair Van Bramer and my colleagues. Thank you for allowing me to speak on Resolution 285 calling upon the U.S. Secretary of the Interior to recognize the historical, historical significance of Roberto Clemente's place of birth in Luisa, Puerto Rico by adding it to the National Register of Historic Places. With the conclusion of Hispanic Heritage Month this week, I am so pleased that we can cap this month of cultural recognition by bringing attention to the life of a baseball legend, Puerto Rican icon, and inspiring humanitarian. Clemente, who was born to the son of a sugarcane worker in Carolina, Puerto Rico on August 18, 1934, quickly became a baseball star on the island and started his professional career at 18, playing for the Santurce Cangrejeros. After graduating high school, Clemente signed a minor league affiliate of the Brooklyn Dodgers and made his major league debut with the Pittsburgh Pirates the following season. Over the next 17 seasons, Clemente would establish himself as one of the greatest all-around players of all time, reaching many milestones and receiving multiple MVP and Gold Glove awards. Clemente even enlisted during the 1958 to 59 offseason in the U.S. Marine Corps Reserve and served for six years as an infantryman. For all his success, though, Clemente faced numerous challenges. As a black Puerto Rican in Major League Baseball, less than a decade after Jackie Robinson broke baseball's color barrier, Clemente faced discrimination for being a double outsider. He was barred from dining in segregated restaurants or staying in the same hotel with the rest of the team during spring training, while the press relied on Latin stereotypes, mocked his accent by quoting him with phonetic spelling, and ignored his request to not anglicize his name in print. But Clemente did not turn away from these attacks. He challenged the stereotypes that had marginalized native Spanish speakers in the US and often spoke out against prejudice. He became known as a strong voice for the growing contingent of Latino players in the major leagues and advocated for Latino civil rights. Clemente is a hero to all Boricuas because of his commitment to charity and service. Unfortunately, it was during this very pursuit of his humanitarian endeavors that Clemente tragically died. When a massive earthquake struck Nicaragua on December 23, 1972, he decided to personally airlift relief supplies to the nation to ensure they reached those in need. The overloaded plane crashed in Luisa, Puerto Rico shortly after takeoff, and Clemente passed away at the age of 38. With New York State home to over one million Puerto Ricans, many of whom are still recovering from the physical and mental harm caused by Hurricane Maria, it is important that this council and subsequently this nation recognize the life of a man who still inspires so many Boricuas today to rebuild and recover from one of our country's greatest tragedies. And I feel that even now, in one of Puerto Rico's darkest times, we cannot forget our island's proud history with figures like Clemente and Pedro Alviso Campos and Julia de Burgos, and so many others continuing to inspire young and old on the island and in the diaspora to never give up on our dreams. That is why we remember Clemente today. His patriotism remains a part of our people's legacy, and we should recognize where his time ended to celebrate a lifetime of achievement. That is why I hope my colleagues will join me and support this resolution. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councilmember Rivera. And I uh, see that uh, 
we have a speaker from Major League Baseball and others uh, uh, to speak to your uh, very important resolution, and I want to thank you for bringing it to the Council's attention. Um, obviously, the, uh, the record shows many things about Roberto Clemente that all of us admire, um, but there's always things that we don't yet know, and this helps bring to light uh, so many things about his important life uh, and legacy and all the things that he did beyond playing for baseball, but um, I did not know that he had a Brooklyn Dodger uh, Association, although Councilmember Holden was nodding his head that yes, he knew that. Um, yes, of course. I was a big Brooklyn Dodger fan and a Roberto Clemente fan, and when they traded him, their, the rights to him, um, they traded away championships because they, would, they, they won only one in Brooklyn. And with Clemente in the lineup, could you imagine um, what they would have done with Jackie Robinson, Clemente, Pee Wee Reese, Duke Snyder, all the greats. Uh, but Clemente had some, it, I saw him play. I saw him play live. And he had such an arm that he could throw from the warning track and throw somebody out of home plate. And, and he was fast. He was probably the best player, that, along with Willie Mays, the best player that I witnessed. But what a tragedy that we lost him. He had exactly 3,000 hits, which is a milestone. And then we lost him, uh, obviously, in the plane crash. But that, and that was devastating to everyone. Um, but if the Brooklyn Dodgers had, had certainly Roberto Clemente, we would have had a bunch of, bunch of maybe they wouldn't have moved out <laughs> also. But uh, he was a great player, yeah. Well, we learned. Uh a lot of things about Councilmember Holden. You, you love baseball and you also hold grudges as you've not let go that the Brooklyn Dodgers let uh, Roberto Clemente go all those years ago. Um, so uh, thank you. Uh, anyone else want to speak to Roberto Clemente? Yeah, he was uh, a legend. Uh, so we're also hearing uh, three resolutions that are sponsored by Councilmember Bob Holden uh, that honor in a very important community in not only his beloved district, but the city of New York, and that, of course, is the Polish and Polish-American community, uh, Rezos 420, 421, and 422, uh, honor uh, and seek to recognize uh, both Polish Independence Day and, of course, some of the legends, uh, including uh, Kazimierz Pulaski and uh, Tadeusz Kosciuszko. And I hope I said those at least in some semblance of uh, an accurate way. Um, I am proud to be married to a Polish-American, a proud Polish-American uh, who hails from the uh, Polish-American community in Hamtramck, Michigan. But uh, I would like to ask Councilmember Holden to speak to his three uh, resolutions honoring all of those who are Polish and Polish-American. Thank you, Chair Van Bremer. Um, yes. Uh, Polish people obviously made a big, uh, actually, com uh, uh, certainly um, a commitment in, uh, in our re revolution. And uh, so, re so um, Resolution 420 declares November 11th as Polish Independence Day in the city of New York. Since regaining independence in 1918, Poland has been involved in numerous important events, including the, the invasion uh, by Nazi Germany in 1939, which began World War II. Uh, they were also forced to adopt communism by the Soviet Union and, and the People's uh, Republic of Poland in 1945. But it was also the birthplace of the Solidarity Movement in the 1980s that resulted in um, actually the defeat of communism and the establishment of the Democratic Third Polish Republic. Uh, they've also become um, a role model for countries that experienced political transformation after the revolutions of 1989. And to speak of, about New York City, there are approximately 200,342 200, people of Polish ancestry within New York City. Um, New York City is often called America's most Polish town, with many Polish restaurants, markets, cultural institutes, and uh, existing within the city. New York City has also recognized and celebrated Polish history, including like the, mentioned, the Polish leaders you mentioned, Kazimierz Pulaski, who, with the annual Pulaski Day Parade on Fifth Avenue, and Thaddeus Kosciuszko, um, with the naming of the, the Kosciuszko Bridge in Maspeth that we all love and get stuck on um, every year, um, or every day. <laughs> um, I'll speak to Resolution 421, 
declaring October 11th as Kazimierz Pulaski Day in the city of New York. Uh, he's a Polish-American hero who came from Poland to assist the American colonists during their fight with the British in the American Revolution and was a big part um, of, of American, uh, like I said, the um, independence, and he's a big part in Polish history. In 1777, uh, Pulaski arrived in Philadelphia meeting George Washington and volunteering his services to help American colonists fight England. Uh, Pulaski and his legion were instrumental in protecting America's independence, including being involved in the action along the New Jersey coast uh, in October of 1778, and also defending Charleston, South Carolina in May 1779, and fighting in the siege of Savannah in Georgia in October 1779. And of course, we have the Pulaski Day Parade in Fifth Avenue, like I mentioned before, it's the first Sunday in October. Um, and again, uh, Kazimierz Pulaski Day will strengthen Polish-American pride, as well as celebrate and commemorate uh, a man who was a huge part in the American Revolution, and we have to thank him for that. Um, and I'll speak finally to Resolution 422, declaring October 15th as Thaddeus Kosciuszko Day, and it's not Kosciuszko, it's Kosciuszko, because the Sisters of the Holy Nazareth taught me that, and uh, how, to, how to pronounce that. Thaddeus Kosciuszko uh, emigrated to America in June 1776 after being recruited by Ben Franklin to fight for the American independence from England. Kosciuszko was a chief engineer of the entire Continental Army by the end of 1776. He played a huge role in the American war effort, obviously, showcasing his talent in constructing defensive fortifications. Um, seen in, the, in fortifying Philadelphia, Saratoga, Fort Ticonderoga, and West Point. And that's why I guess they named the bridge after him, because he was an engineer. So at the end uh, of the American Revolution, Kosciuszko was promoted to Brigadier General in the United States Army and received uh, citizenship, U.S. citizenship. So Kosciuszko is commemorated by having monuments, stamps, streets, parks named after him. And, and like I mentioned, the, the, the lovely new one, Kosciuszko Bridge. So th thank you, uh, Chair, and uh, I hope uh, that the council passes the resolutions. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Council Member Holden, for bringing all of these important resolutions to the council and uh, reminding us of some very important history and, of course, so important to honor uh, our Polish and Polish-American communities. Uh, in Queens and throughout the city uh, and indeed the country. We have one other resolution that we're hearing today. Uh, Council Member Eugene, who could not be with us, uh, is sponsoring Resolution 203, a resolution establishing February 4th as Rosa Parks Day to commemorate the civil rights leader. Obviously, all of us are familiar or should be familiar uh, with the story on December 1st, 1955, Rosa Parks famously refused to surrender her seat to a white passenger on a Montgomery, Alabama bus. Her heroic act of civil disobedience would lead to a citywide boycott of buses and a United States Supreme Court ruling ordering the desegregation of buses. Within such a culturally diverse city that truly values and honors our civil rights leaders, the council is proud to recognize Rosa Parks's contributions. So with that said, we're hearing all five of these resolutions uh, today. And we have with us uh, Thomas Brossel from Major League Baseball. Uh, I assume to speak to the Roberto Clemente uh, resolution, but please uh, join us, Thomas. And Thank you. Feel free to turn on the mic and start your testimony. Great, thank you. My name is uh, Tom Braswell. I'm the Vice President of Community Affairs for Major League Baseball. Uh, and I bring a statement from Bernie Williams. Uh, good day to you all. I am sorry I'm unable to be present at this hearing today, but had a long scheduled previous commitment speaking at a conference at Temple University for idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, the disease that took my dad's life. I am, however, grateful to be able to submit this statement supporting the New York City Council resolution calling for the United States Congress to add the site of Roberto Clemente's tragic death to the National Register of Historic Places. 
Words will never be able to adequately express the pride I have having been a Major League Baseball player who is a native of Puerto Rico. Like many children growing up in Puerto Rico, I dreamed of being able to be like the great Roberto Clemente. And as I got older and progressed to the major leagues, playing in New York City, I wanted to not just emulate the player Roberto was, but also the person he was and everything Roberto Clemente represented off the field. Clemente stood up for and helped break barriers and open doors for Latino players in Major League Baseball. Clemente is an icon, not just for the great player he was, but for how he led his life, giving back to others, particularly those less fortunate. Clemente died as he lived, serving others. He died on New Year's Eve in 1972 while embarking on a mission to deliver relief supplies to earthquake-ravaged Nicaragua. When news of Clemente's death spread around the island, reactions were a combination of shock and sadness, but mostly stunned silence. I was only four, but I realized then that Puerto Rico and America had lost a hero. There were similar reactions in Pittsburgh, New York, and across America and around the world. Today, nearly 50 years after his death, Roberto Clemente is still an idol to Puerto Ricans everywhere and is the gold standard for athletes looking to help others and serve the community. As Major League Baseball is about to announce the recipient of the annual Roberto Clemente Award at this year's World Series, recognizing the positive impact players have off the field, it is important that we all follow that example and commemorate the life of Roberto Clemente for all generations to come. By adding the site of Roberto's passing to the National Register of Historic Places, we celebrate his life, his legacy, and establish an inspiring reminder of service above self to current and future generations who will visit Puerto Rico and this site. Thank you for this opportunity and for your consideration of this long overdue recognition for the great Roberto Clemente. Sincerely, Bernie Williams, former Major League Baseball player, 1991 to 2006. Thank you very much for being here and obviously thank you to uh, Bernie Williams um, for uh, speaking on this very important resolution and uh, of course we all know him as a great uh, Yankee and even though I'm a big Mets fan we can still appreciate uh, all of uh, uh, what he means to the city to the island of Puerto Rico uh, and to the country. And uh, we very much appreciate you being here to speak on behalf of this important resolution. Thank you, and I should just note, uh, Congressman Serrano, who has the resolution in, the, in, the, in Congress, it was uh, passed out of committee and it's been put on the full House calendar and there is a senator who also is planning on introducing some, uh, a resolution probably within the next 30 days or so. So uh, this is moving forward pretty quickly. So we thank okay. the council, uh, thank the committee and Council Member Rivera for this uh, tremendous support. Absolutely, I hope that uh, Council Member Rivera's resolution and our passing it helps just a little bit in making sure that it happens. Thank, thank you. you so much again thank you. for being here today. Um, and I don't believe we have any others to testify on the issue today, um, but uh, before going, I want to uh, recognize Chloe Rivera to my left. Uh, this will be her last hearing uh, as <coughs> um, our uh, aide on the committee. Uh, she's been uh, working with the Committee on Cultural Affairs for about three years. Um, but of course, before she was with this committee, uh, she served as an intern uh, in my first year as a council member, uh, starting on the same day as my chief of staff, Matt Wallace, uh, who is now with me for well over eight years. Uh, so we're very excited for Chloe as she moves on to some new assignments here at the council. Uh, so we'll still be seeing her, but I wanna thank her for her uh, incredible service to this committee um, and all that she has uh, done for uh, the council, my committee, the city of New York, and. Uh, we expect great things from Chloe Rivera going forward uh, in her career. Uh, and I know we'll welcome formally our new uh, uh, staff member at the next uh, committee, but for this one we want to say thank you to Chloe uh, and wish her well in her new assignments here at the council. We've also been joined by Council Member Joe Borelli on the committee from Staten Island. Uh, and unless there is anyone else to testify on any of these resolutions, we are adjourned.